Good afternoon from BBC London News. I'm Jason Rossum. Tenants living on inner London estates owned by the Crown have been campaigning against plans to sell off their homes today. Some have lived in the affordable housing for decades, but now fear they'll be forced out if private landlords take over. Aisha Baksh has been to a demonstration in Hackney this morning. Well, the demonstrations are feeling here today. I think the Crown estate have a fight on their hands. A man from Enfield has been arrested and charged with harassment after a complaint by the actress Kieran Knightley. Marak Deluliak, who's originally from Poland, was charged yesterday. It's housed works by Banksy and Damien Hirst, but now the East London gallery and pub The Foundry is set to be demolished. Vishva Samani has been to find out more about the venue that's become the focal point for Hackney's alternative art scene. Vishva Samani, BBC London News. Now sports and it's a busy weekend in the Premier League ahead of tomorrow's Chelsea Arsenal clash. West Ham travel to Burnley this afternoon. There's full coverage on our radio station BBC London 94.9 from 3 and over on our digital station and online we'll have commentary on Crystal Palace's championship match at Scunthorpe. At 5.30 you can catch the Premier League clash between Tottenham and Aston Villa. And a quick look at the weather now, and most places will stay dry but cloudy for the rest of the day. It'll feel rather cold though, with the temperature around 5 degrees. Tonight, patchy drizzle could develop as the cloud thickens and the temperature will drop, but most places should avoid a frost. That's all from us this lunchtime, but we'll be back with another update at 4.30 this evening. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Queen's Hospital here in Romford where the picket line began for these junior doctors at 8am. You can see a number of the uh, placards here. We've got two junior doctors here that I want to talk to uh, for BBC Radio London. Dr Salman Hader. And Dr Marvish Javid. And Dr Hader. Um, just explain to people, I still think people don't understand what this strike is all about. Could you explain it yes, to Yes, of course. So the strike is mainly about patient safety, about spreading a workforce too thinly. Uh, over uh, a workforce that already works seven days a week, 24 hours, hours a day, without incre increasing appropriate resources to supply and provide the demand, uh, uh, meet the demand that's necessary. Um, it's, it's also fundamentally, therefore, about patient safety. And is it about patient safety or is it about pay? Because some people are thinking here it's, it must be about the money, they must want more money. Is that true? That's not true. Patient priority is our first concern, their safety. The question of murder after nothing. three children were found dead at a house in South London. Our reporter Jason Rosam is there for us now. Very good morning. What more can you tell us at this point, Jason? Well, Louise, in the last few minutes, we've had an update from the Metropolitan Police who tell us a 43-year-old woman has been arrested on suspicion of murder after these three children's bodies were found here at this large family home in a relatively wealthy part of southwest London last night. Now, police have been removing evidence bags from the property here in New Malden this morning. Neighbours making their, work, uh, their way to work this morning, walking the dog, taking the children to school, looking very shocked and confused this morning as to what happened here last night. Uh, police arrived just after 9.30 last night where they found these three children's bodies. We understand police are not looking for anyone else. OK, Jason, thank you very much for bringing us up today. Thank you. In other news, the number of people seeking treatment... This is Asda's wonky veg box. If you come in, you'll be able to see the kind of stuff that you can get. I mean, they're not that wonky. There's smaller peppers, some carrots in there. You've got some parsnip and onions and leeks and cabbage. Um, but they're, they're not too wonky. They're all right. And it's £3.50 for this wonky veg box. Paul is the deputy store manager at the Asda superstore here in Beckton. Uh, how have they been going, Paul? Uh, yeah, fantastic. We've got customers calling us up whether we've got more. Uh, we sold out within two days and they're a great price. So people are getting value for their money, you know. So there's a lot in there. As you can see, there'll be a few dents on this parsnip, but quality-wise, you put that in a casserole, you're going to have no difference to one that's not got any dent. Yeah, you could have a casserole for a whole week in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's only, casserole, and everything. it's £3.50. If you bought those, all of those vegetables, it's, in the other aisles, how yeah, much would that be? It would be? average out to about £7, £8. So you, you've got a good 50% uh, saving there if you... Uh, buy this uh, if you go around and buy the others it, obviously it's going to fill up your trolley as well because it's going to be all different boxes of different shapes 
Welcome to the Judith Kerr Primary School here in Herne Hill, where the parents and the children are trying to save their school playing field, which is owned by the Dulwich Estate. The Dulwich Estate wants to build housing on the development. Catherine is a mum at the school. Tell us a little bit about the playing field and what the Dulwich Estate wants to do to it. Okay, so the Judith Kerr Primary School is a fully inclusive state primary school and the playing field is where the children go out and play, it's where they do their sport, we have a veg patch, we have an outdoor classroom, it's absolutely integral to the school. So let's just say are minded to build sheltered housing on it. We're not against sheltered housing, but we don't understand why that should be next to the primary school. The playing field needs to be next to the primary school. And your son, Stephen, who's six years old, tell us, Stephen, what you do in the playing field uh, um, right now and, and what you would say to the people who want to build on it. So, um, we would do sport there and we would play from games at playtime and we would um, have first great time, second great sport great right there. Okay so, Stephen, what about your friend Caleb here who's seven years old? You're at the school as well Caleb. So it's like in the school playground it's big it, but even if they cut off half the playground the football f p field will be pushed back and the people who don't want to play football can get less we space. Plant insects, we plant seeds, we um, do we do that sort of stuff and then... So you don't want it to be developed? No. Alright, and you, they've, these uh, parents and children here have got together a petition. 1,200 people have signed that uh, petition and the fight goes on. Police are still questioning a man in connection with the murder of a 59-year-old in his own home. Jerry Edwards from Bromley was stabbed to death in what police believe was a homophobic attack. His partner, who was also attacked, is fighting for his life in hospital. Police have released a second suspect on bail. An artist from East London who created an inflatable artwork which flipped over killing two women will not face a retrial for manslaughter. 27 people were also injured by the PVC Dream Space sculpture in County Durham in 2006. Morris Aegis from Bethnal Green was convicted of breaking health and safety rules. 400 people have now contacted health officials after becoming ill, having eaten at the celebrity chef Heston Blumenthal's restaurant, The Fat Duck in Bray. It's famous for having three Michelin stars, but the restaurant closed a week ago following the food scare. The Health Protection Agency is now dealing with the problem. A number of investigations are going on. We're following, the various samples are being taken of the restaurant, of people who have been ill, of food samples. We're also uh, planning to talk to all those who uh, who've had symptoms and other diners who've been there without symptoms if that's possible. Well there's more on the rest of the day's stories in our main programme at 6.30. Have a very good afternoon. Goodbye.